Today's World Net Daily exclusive audio article is entitled, Canceling America. Now they're canceling cartoons. They're cartoons, people. But that's what leftists do and have done for over a century. It began with Woodrow Wilson's want to rewrite the Constitution. His reasoning was that it was a fine document for its time, but was no longer applicable to the concerns of the day. You could say he was the father of modern-day cancel culture. Frankly, in my opinion, Wilson is the father of everything that's wrong with America at present. But I digress. Since then, the left has evolved, or devolved, into what we see today. A movement bent on asserting that all past American culture is offensive, isolating it, and then little by little, step by step, erasing it from history until there's nothing left. It used to be that we on the right were afraid that the left wanted to spin or change history. For example, that it wasn't the Democrats who were the party of slavery, Jim Crow, and the Klan. That they've always been an advocate for people of color. It was a win for them for sure. But the truth may eventually come out because the history is still there for anyone to find if they are so inclined. In other words, the history wasn't erased. However, it appears that the left has learned this lesson. It appears that they figured out that it's more effective and a lot quicker to just cancel history, erase it, wipe it away, rather than take many decades to change and spin it. The statue of Robert E. Lee was torn down in 2017, less than four years ago. How far we've come since then. Tearing down statues and monuments, canceling the Confederacy, This was a logical beginning of the cancel culture movement. Pick something easy and obvious that no one or very few would oppose. Get the people used to the idea of declaring something offensive and canceling it. Just haul it away and treat it as if it never existed. It's classic totalitarian leftism. And it's the slippery slope we've been warning of. They knew there would be little outrage, little pushback, which allowed them to crest the top of the slippery slope. And once over the crest, the hard part is done, and it's all downhill from there. Now, simultaneously, they've done a pretty bang-up job at convincing the average American that there is no such thing as a slippery slope, and whoever believes or worse verbalizes is a right-wing conspiracy nut, which further limits the pushback. No one ever said these people were stupid, just evil. But now we are well over the crest, so it's full steam ahead. Cancel everything from the consequential to the trivial. So it's on to Dr. Seuss and children's movies. Like other totalitarian regimes have understood throughout history, indoctrinate the children, get them while they're young, impressionable, and have no sense of historical context. Or better yet, just remove offensive material, wipe it away like it never existed. It reminds me of the movie Yesterday. In the movie, a young man wakes up after an accident to find he's the only one on earth who remembers the Beatles. All traces of the Fab Four are gone. If this cancel culture trend continues, within a generation the children of today will barely know of Dr. Seuss or the majority of classic Disney movies like Peter Pan, Dumbo, and Swiss Family Robinson, and I'm sure many more to come. And if we don't stand up against it, we will lose what it means to be an American. We will lose our unique and rich American history and may end up looking more like North Korea, where history begins with their first great leader. Thank you for listening.